time to do some more airflow box testing. But before we do that, I want to take a full look at all the rainbow nozzles I have. Well, the two that you're looking at right now, even though I'm going to be looking at four here, these two are actually mine. So the one on the right with the metal base plate goes to my 1993 SE. And you can see what that looks like. That is one big whopping brush roll. And look at all that empty space. Incredible. But real, real metal. And see, I put a new seal on there, just weather stripping. So uh, 42 CFM at the nozzle. For some reason, I thought it was 41. It's actually like 41.6. Uh, but uh, we'll call it 42. And you can take a look at the U-joint that's right there. Uh, it's very leaky, but that's that's what you got there. So let's move forward to 1997, and let's take a look at my PE nozzle. Pop the little plate off, and you can see the difference, obviously, between brush roll, beater bar, brush roll, and it's got these little leading edge things right here, I suppose. With the traveling like this, you would really call it trailing edge, but it's got the same kind of U-joint and an awful lot of airflow loss from here to here. Um, so hooked up to my um, 1997 D4C SE, we're talking 33 nozzle CFM with the, uh, with the brush roll spinning. And this one uh, here is a PN2. Now let's go to the first one I have of Thomas Rechtenwald's over here, and it's a PN2E. It's the one on the right. So I've never shown this one before, but you can see the similarities. So best as I can figure, the only real difference between the PN2E and the PN2 is the fact, you know what, I really should put this back over here, there we go, is that you have, <laughs> I took it off, you have these little agitator brushes right here on either side, but they have been replaced <clears throat> with a height adjustment roller. So for whatever reason, that seems to be the big improvement that the PN2E has. If you notice the various inner workings here, you still have this same type of leaky U-joint. Now, I haven't measured this, but this is what I'm actually going to measure. And what's in here appears to be exactly the same thing as far as I can tell. There might be some other internal differences somewhere in here. Uh, maybe this is going to be a little tighter. Maybe it's going to be leakier. Don't know yet. I don't know why it would be because the airflow path is still here through this into there. So I don't think that whatever, you know, these rollers are uh, or whatever's inside is probably going to be any worse. So it may be um, still just as leaky as this one, but we're going to be hooking this up to his E2 two-speed platinum blue. So I am expecting higher airflow out of this. And then if we go all the way to the left, we have his PN12. You can see that. Show them together. <clears throat> see the differences? And what's so interesting about this is they made a big improvement so if i take this plate off you will see the big improvement and this was measured brush roll spinning i think about 59 cfm so see this i want to make sure you can see that yeah right here this is a piece of tubing so i'm going to get this closer to the camera this is where Rainbow had a streak of brilliance, or somebody finally said, you know what, 
we need to do something about the airflow loss in our power nozzle. So they just used some tubing, hooked it up to a little adapter plate here. Then of course they have this, this really, really large, uh, I guess, connecting rod that takes everything from here and then puts it up to the, the wand. And that's what makes this whole unit right in here super tight. So that makes a huge, huge difference. So I wonder, since this is almost 60, what will this one be? Is it going to be maybe 40, 45? I'm not sure. So let's measure it and find out. Well, I'm all hooked up here. So let's take this PN2E that's hooked up to an E2, not the E2 that's right there. Why isn't it hooked up to that? Because this guy needs bearings really badly. So badly, I don't even want to turn it on for a minute or so. All right, let's go ahead and get started. My loaded line voltage right now is a little bit higher. Instead of like 121.2, I'm at about 122.3. So that will make a little less than a 1% increase. Okay, 1811, with the brush roll off, we're looking at 47.3 CFM. That's quite an improvement, but of course the improvement comes from a lot more air right at this point compared to like say a D4, and no, this isn't what you want to hook up to a D4, but you could if you wanted to. So anyway, uh, quite an improvement uh, from going to a PE nozzle from 1997 to an E2 with this particular nozzle, you're looking at, oh uh, boy, let's see, 47 minus 33, you're looking at a 14 CFM increase, and the rug plate opening is the same. So this definitely will clean better. Um, I also noticed that I think this thing is supposedly rated at like 2.4 amps and that would be running on the pile carpet. When it's not on the pile carpet, it's only six or 700 milliamps. So let's go ahead and rerun this with the nozzle spinning. And I think Thomas tells me that um, the motor in here might not be in such great shape because it makes a real racket when it runs. So we're down to about 45. So turning the brush roll on, uh, it didn't really lower my line voltage much, a couple tenths of a volt, but uh, it definitely lowered the CFM a little bit. Um, not a whole lot, but some. So anyway, I would imagine the airflow from this E2 uh, would be the same as his newer blue E2, but I don't know. This one, I'm not gonna test. But right here we have 45.2 CFM with the brush roll spinning. And this one is about like 59. So we're looking at about a 14 CFM increase. And that is definitely noticeable. 
with the addition of the brush roll shrinkage, this is going to clean a lot better than that will. Although, with the brush roll being smaller, right, it's going to take you longer. Alright, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.